Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coins with Clutch. I'm your host, Chris Clutch. And I want to thank you all for finding my YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please click the subscribe button up at the top. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, hopefully you guys got a chance to see my other videos. I covered pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And to this video here, we're going to get into the half dollar. Uh, here's a example of one. This one is a Kennedy half dollar. Uh, these are the more common types. These have been around since 1964. And they're still in, you know, being minted to date now. Although they're not really as common as what they used to be back in, like, say, the 70s or the 80s. So I'm sure there's a whole generation of people out there who don't even know what a 50 cent piece or a half dollar looks like. So uh, this video, I'll kind of go over the different types of half dollars that are out there. Um, there's been quite a few leading up to this point and uh, specifically what to look for when you go through half dollars. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and uh, hope you learn a thing or two from this video. So similar to the dime and the quarter that I covered earlier, um, this barber or liberty head half dollar uh, was minted from 1892 to 1915. And uh, it was designed by Charles E. Barber, who was the head of the mint at the time. And his initial B is located at the truncation of the neck. And if you can zoom in here, I can show you real quick. It'd be right there. See that dark colored spot? Maybe you can see it better on this one. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to make out, but it's there. So, up oh, right there. See? B. I was looking in the wrong spot. And B, yeah, you can barely make it out there. Um, again, these look so similar to the quarter and to the dime of its type. Uh, this here is an 1899 Barber Half Dollar, uh, Philadelphia Mint. Uh, you can see the wings cover both the E of United and the E of America. Uh, the back on this one's a little worn. Uh, this one here is a 1908 Denver Mint. Yeah, this one's a little more detailed. And you can see the mint mark for D for Denver is located right underneath the eagle. Right above the word half dollar. And these are 90% silver coins. So, if you come across one of these, I would definitely hold on to it. Next up, you got the Liberty Walking Half Dollar. Uh, this type was designed by Adolf A. Weinman whose monogram AW appears underneath the tips of the tail feathers on the reverse of the coin. And if you look right here down at the bottom real close, uh, you can see it there. And here's another example. See the AW. Uh, on the 1916 and some of the 1917 coins, the mint mark is located on the obverse just below the motto. And the Mint also created a 2016 Gold Liberty Walking Half Dollar is similar dimensions. So if you ever find a half dollar that's gold in color and it has this design on it, I would definitely hold on to it because that is a gold version of the half dollar. Uh, again, these are 90% silver. Uh, these are, this is a 1942 Philadelphia Mint, so no Mint Mark. And this is a 1937. All right. Uh, something to keep in mind, too. In 1916 and 1917, the mint mark shows up underneath the In God We Trust right here. And then in 1917 to 1947, the mint mark is on the reverse, just to the left of the word half dollar. Kind of right here in this little... I'll zoom in right here, right where that little ridge is, kind of in between the, the rim of the coin and that first ridge right there. Next up are the Franklin half dollars. Uh, these were minted from 1948 to 1963. Uh, the Franklin half dollar was introduced to honor Benjamin Franklin, who, as you know, is a renowned printer, author, inventor, and diplomat. 
Uh, his efforts on behalf of the fledging United States have earned him a well-deserved reputation as one of the first great American citizen patriots. Uh, U.S. Mint Chief Engraver John R. Sanuck, who also helped design the Roosevelt dime, uh, he designed this coin. His initials appear just below Franklin's shoulder. You know, some of these are hard to make out, but uh, they're kind of right there. See, J, you can kind of see it there. I'll zoom in a little bit. J, R, S. Uh, the Liberty Bell design is on the reverse, okay? Uh, it was modeled after a sketch by artist John Frederick Lewis. In addition, you see this little eagle right here? This was actually added to the reverse to satisfy the Mint Act of 1873, which states that on the reverse of any coin of that time period, it was going to be a soaring eagle or some kind of flying eagle on the reverse. Uh, following Sanook's death in 1947, his successor, Gilroy Roberts, completed the coin design. Now, for its relatively short lifespan, the Franklin Half Dollar has a robust amount of varieties among its circulation strikes, including a 1948 double die reverse, a 1949 S double mint mark, a 1951 double die reverse, a 1955 clashed obverse die, also known as the Bugs Bunny variety, and a 1959 double die reverse. Uh, these half dollars were struck in Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, but not all the mints in all the years. As you can see, the mint mark D for Denver, S for San Francisco, no mint mark for Philadelphia is located right above the bell. Right there. Again, these are 90% silver, so if you ever were to find one of these, I would definitely hold on to it. As you can see, I only have two. I have a 1958 Denver, and I have a 1963. So the Kennedy half dollar started being minted in 1964. Okay, and uh, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963, was a devastating blow to the people of the United States and the world. And then almost immediately, plans were, to, were made to create a lasting memorial to the beloved president in the form of a circulating coin. Uh, the Congressional Act of December 20th, 1963, authorized replacement of the Franklin half dollar with the new Kennedy coin. As you can see, the reverse has the flying eagle on it. And this is the obverse of Kennedy. And I'll zoom in so you can see that. Uh, the U.S. Mint Chief Engraver Gilroy Roberts designed the obverse, modeling the profile portrait after the one on Kennedy's Presidential Medal. Assistant engraver Frank Gasparro designed the reverse using the presidential shield that appears on other U.S. Mint presidential medals. Uh, originally struck in silver, the composition of the half dollar was changed in 1965. So in 1964, they were 90% silver. From 1965 to 1970, they were changed to 40% silver. So they still had the silver clad the silver rim on it, like I showed you for dimes and quarters, if you look at a silver coin, uh, you can see that it has the uh, white clear rim to it. Okay, here's another silver. This is a 1968 Denver Mint. This is 40% silver. Uh, after 1970, from 1971 onwards, the half dollar adopted the same clad composition that dimes and quarters had been using since 1965. Outer layers of copper nickel, 75% copper and 25% nickel, bound to an inner core of pure copper. So, so starting in, so 1970, those were only issued in mint sets. And then 1971, it started the clad series, the regular clad coins. All right. In 1975 and 1976, 
The half dollar with a special Philadelphia Independence Hall reverse was issued in honor of the U.S. Bicentennial. Designer Seth G. Huntington's initials appear to the right of the building. And you can see right here, Seth Huntington. The dual date 1976, or the dual date 1776 to 1976 appears on the obverse, just similar to the quarter. Now, there are no half dollars dated 1975. The original design was resumed starting in 1977. As you can see, 1977. And then continuing on. Now the mint mark D for Denver, no mint mark for Philadelphia on coins issued in 1964 appears on the reverse just below the eagle's right claw. So if you can see, Uh, okay, yeah, 1964, just below the, so we had to go back this way. Here is an example of a Denver Mint Mark below the claw. That was on a 1964 D. In 1965 through 1967, no Mint Marks. Okay, so as you can see, 65, 66, 67 were all minted in Philadelphia with no Mint Marks. In 1968, the mint mark D for Denver, S for San Francisco, no mint mark for Philadelphia, was relocated to the obverse at the trocation of the bust. And as you can see, 1968, there's the dead mint mark D for Denver. And then starting in 1980, the mint mark P appeared on the half dollars. And we'll move over here to the 1980s. There's 1980P, and there's the P mint mark right above the date. And it kept going ever since. So, as you can see, there's the mid to late 80s. The P for Denver, or P for Philadelphia, D for Denver. Uh, here's through the 90s. And then in 1999. Something else to keep in mind, too, is that 1971 Denver Mints and 1977 Denver Mints, some were struck in silver clad composition by error. So if you ever find those dates that were struck in silver, those are very valuable and those are definitely worth keeping. Uh, up until 2001, uh, they continued the clad composition and those were actually in circulation. But starting in 2002 to present day, uh, the Kennedy half dollars were what's considered NIFC or not intended for circulations. So if you ever find that those dates in in uh, coin rolls or out in loose change, then those are definitely keepers and you want to hold on to those. As you can see, I don't have too many of those dates. Uh, these are ones that I found and those are ones that I held on to. I also have some more recent dates. I have a 2017, 2018. And then 2021, I have a complete set in 2022. Again, these coins are considered NIFC, uncirculated, not intended for circulation. So on the back of every modern day Kennedy half dollar, and I will zoom in here, you'll see the initials FG. That's for Frank Gaspero, who was the creator designer of the reverse of the half dollar. In some instances, especially in your older coins, they were dated like in the 70s, uh, after 70s, 71. Uh, some of the coins were printed in error without the FG uh, initials on the reverse. If you were ever, ever to find a half dollar without the FG initials, uh, those could be worth anywhere up to a couple of hundred dollars a piece, depending on the condition of the coin. So it'd be definitely something that you would hold on to. So always check the back of your half dollars and make sure that they have the FG mint mark. If they don't have the FG mint mark, that's very valuable and it's definitely worth a lot more than 50 cents.
Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my video on half dollars. Hopefully, you learned a couple of things about them. Um, again, there were a lot of varieties leading up to the Kennedy. And, then, you know, especially look for silver Kennedys, uh, whether it be your 90% silver variety with your 1964 or your 1965 through 1970, which has 40% silver. And then also look for your NIFC or not intended for circulation Kennedy half dollars, which start from 2002 and they continue on to this date. So I uh, hope you find it interesting. Um, I will do another loose change segment that covers the roll of half dollars. So we'll go through those and see what we can find. Again, I'm Chris Clutch. Uh, thank you for joining me on Coins with Clutch and you guys have a blessed day.